Hello and a warm welcome back up into the loft here. Thanks for looking back at the channel. So, good news. After last week's um, little chat about the main layout, I have now decided that I'm going to build my layout based on track plan 17 of the third edition Hornby track plan. So I'm quite excited about that now. So I'm waiting on some CLS and some other materials just to slightly extend the main table. A couple of people have suggested, you know, rather than trying to draw out any modifications on paper, just start building it and just experiment with um, whatever changes you think you're going to make and see how they look. So that's the way I'm going. I'm going to have to make quite a few changes because there's no curve points in Super 4, but we'll get around that. So today um, we're going to have a look at this Hornby 003232 Coco Diesel Electric. I came across this while I was looking for Super 4 track because I'm building up an inventory of what I've got just to make sure I can build this layout and I think I can. So I thought it'd be good to bring this loco back to life. So we'll do a quick video on it and then run it around the double O test track. So immediately I'm just going to say as I get it out of the box it was put away with a few issues. I mean there's a there's a wire off, nothing too difficult, we'll just solder that back. Main problem I suppose is that there's absolutely no sign of the traction tyres. They've all disappeared over the period of time, just a little bit of grubby residue in there. So that's going to be the main thing, but what we need to do firstly is just check that there's some life in it, because I don't really want to spend too much time. So let's get some crocodile clips, we've got some power, and just see whether we can coax something from the motor. Oop, nothing there. Let's just uh, go direct on to the, the casing. Ah oh, yes, seems to be a bit of life in that, just a bit dry, requires some lubrication so I think if we can just get some new tyres fitted we're going to be able to run this nicely. Okay, well what I'll do is move a couple of things around now so we can get the wheels cleaned and I'll show you how I'm going to clean those. So just give me a minute to move a couple of things around and get a bit more equipment and then we'll have a look at just cleaning the wheels and fitting the new traction tyres. I'm just going to take these sides off so we've got a little bit more visibility. So I'll be back with you in a minute. Right, well I've just removed these two die cast side mouldings and just undone this top screw and already there's another broken wire in there. So this was um, never going to run. Now what I'm going to do is just unsolder the other wire and then we'll solder them all back on nicely later. Now I've taken a photograph with my phone so it's easy to uh, reconnect them in the correct position. So there's the motor bogey and we will just again give that a little try. I want it to run so I can clean the grooves with this little old worn out wire brush. So that's just uh, see how it goes. Now that's running quite nicely. Mm. Now that's smelling a bit warm. So I think we definitely need to oil this before we run it anymore. So I've got this little bottle of uh, proper lubricating oil here. And I'm just going to use the 
little dropper to lubricate it. So this is going to take a little minute or two. So I'll get that done and then we'll come back and clean the wheels. There's just lots of little bits of rubber falling out. Hard, decayed. So I don't think it's going to be any problem just to clean the grooves out with a wire brush. Anyway, join me in a minute after I've given this an oiling and we'll see how the wheels clean up. Right, well I've got that nicely oiled now and it's running super smooth. Just uh, check my connections. Now I'm just going to use very gently my glass fibre brush just to have a quick clean of the commentator. Doesn't really need much. And then I'm going to get it up to full power and start cleaning the grooves in these wheels. You see I'm just pressing the wire brush into each groove and letting the rotation do the cleaning. A lot of power in this model. It's running really nicely after that oiling so I think it's going to go beautifully around the track. Now it's important that when you have oiled it that you don't get any anywhere near the traction tyres. Right, let's have a look now and see how those look. Not too bad. Still not happy with that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my screwdriver just to go into the groove to make sure there's no... Oh, you can see little bits of black coming out just going to get those grooves clean to the bottom. This rubber really sticks. Those two seem fine. There seem to be some rough bits on those wheels. little bits of rubber that won't cut, oh yeah right, that's got that. Set like absolute rock. Whoops, let's just get this back on. That's much better. Anything stuck to the wheel before you put the tyre on will cause some extremely uneven running. Anyway, happy with that. So I think what we'll do now is we'll get the new tyres on. Now I've got these from a well-known auction site. Haven't used them before. They're a sort of clear colour so we're going to give them a try. Now let's uh, see what they're like. Now we only put them on the outside drivers so there's four required. There's eight in that packet. I'm just going to check that the oil hasn't there's a little bit of residue there but it hasn't got onto the wheel. Let's just take a look at one of these, see if I can show you that. It uh, seems to be quite stretchy, so there shouldn't be any problem putting it on. So I'm going to stretch that over and see how it fits. You've got to be careful when you put these on not to get any crosses in the rubber. So I'm going to get these on now, off camera, so I can make sure they're all on alright. And then we'll come back when we reassemble the locomotive. Well that's the traction tyres on. A little bit fiddly, 
because they're so soft you have to just be careful to um, make sure there's no crosses in them they don't cross over just hope you can see those but they've gone on quite nicely seem to fit in the grooves they are very soft but we'll see how they go when they're on the track anyway pretty happy that that's ready so what we're going to do now is just a couple of soldering repairs so this wire is very thin so what I tend to do rather than trying to strip the insulation off is if I heat up the end the insulation goes back and then I just tin it like I've just done there and then I'll quickly re-solder it to the tab and I'm just going to hold that in place with my finger beautiful so that's that joint repaired and then we've just got to get ready to oh, I've made a bit of there, no that seems alright I think it'll um, be good. They're so fine aren't they, these wires? Goodness. Right, let's just have a look at this end. So, let's start soldering them on. So what I'll do first is I'm just going to tin each wire, make sure it's got some solder on it. That's brilliant. Now I've done that I'll just see if I can show you those in the camera. I suppose it's difficult to get them up but let me just see if you can see those against my hand. They've got a nice bit of clean solder on each wire. So all I've got to do now is I'll just flow a little bit of solder onto each of these tabs. So the earth tab and then the live it hardly takes any time at all there might be just a little bit of broken wire on that I don't know whether I can get it off there we go fingers of steel there look there it is so we've got fresh solder on each tab so we're going to get these wires in position It's not an art soldering, it's easy really if you just make sure you get everything well tinned. So, first one. A little bit of breath just to cool it off. That's on nicely. And now we'll just get the other one on there. Excuse my hands. It's just a little bit. There we go. I'll bring that up to the camera and show you now. So I'm just going to put a little bit more. Shouldn't really put solder on with the iron. I'm just going to put a little bit more on that joint. I'm not very happy with it because we do not want a dry joint. Yeah, that, that looks pretty good. So I'll just uh, unplug the soldering iron now and then see if I can show you those joints before I screw the chassis together. So just see the fine red wire there and then the grey wire. So we'll just pop that down. And that just fits on the top now. Securing screw. Now what we'll be able to do now is just test the motor runs from the pickups. Now all these connections have been made so I'll just lie it on its side. Just put the power on. So let's touch the pickup here. Nothing at the moment. All right, let's just connect to the earth. 
Yep, yeah, that's running now. Pickups just need cleaning and these wheels need a little clean here. Okay, well I think we're nearly ready to test on the test track, so what I'll do now is I'll just give the wheels a final clean, get these die cast side frames back on, put the body on and we'll move over to the test track. Okay, the model is now on the track, so we're going to do a little bit of test running. So I'm just going to start it moving. Nice slow start. And away we go. Well, it seems to be running quite nicely with the new traction tyres on. We'll just run it around a couple of times and then we'll get some wagons. Just They do perform really well, these. I think once it's run in a bit, it's going to be quite good. OK. Well, I'll just alter these points by hand. And then we'll reverse in and get this little rake of wagons. Carefully over the points. Now I don't know whether that's going to have coupled by itself. I haven't checked the couplings. Let's see. Just move forward. No, I'm going to have to couple this by hand. So just bear with me a fraction. Right, let's move off. Just close those points and then we'll do a few circuits. I haven't got my ammeter up here, but I'd like to measure the current consumption because it does seem slightly sluggish. These ring fields are usually quite powerful. Might be that it's needing a remagnetisation. But for now, we'll return this to a, a good running locomotive. Just slow it down a fraction and try and get some slightly better shots. Well, that's another double A locomotive brought back to life. I mean, it could do with a little bit more work, but for now, it's looking good. And when I do finally get my main Super 4 layout made, I shall make a nice double O layout on this table. It's got a slight rock on it there. So, it just needs a little bit of an investigation, but on the whole, running well. Well thanks for looking back. Next week maybe we'll have the main layout table finished. Have to wait and see. But I can certainly start sorting track out and getting on with a bit more plating. But thanks for looking in again at the channel. 
and hopefully I'll see you next time. So I'll say goodbye.